This is what a ribbon looks like when it's rolled up. This roll is six and a half inches in diameter. If I reach down and just pull out the center, you get some idea as to its flexibility, which is pretty good, but it shouldn't be flexed continuously. The ribbon is about 16 feet 5 inches long. What you're looking at is one pixel of the ribbon. There are 50 pixels on the whole ribbon. Each of those pixels can be driven to a different color or intensity by the controller that's included. The black stripes are cable ties holding the ribbon to the 3 quarter inch PVC. And it's done at the cut points of the ribbon. You can cut the ribbon in between pixels. This black object here is the IC controller for this pixel. The three white squares are the RGB LEDs. They're driven in parallel and the controller, the little IC, can drive them to any one of two million colors. And then you get 50 of them on the entire strip or, or on the arch in this case. This is a three foot eight inch tree made out of plastic fence. It has 300 blue incandescent mini lights on it. Now the camera is set for its lowest light sensitivity and there's a dark neutral filter on it so you can see the colors. The only purpose here is to give you the relative brightness between the incandescent mini lights and the ribbon. Right now the arch is set to one pixel, so I'm manipulating one RGB channel to fade between the colors. Still one pixel, so I'm flipping between the primary colors in white. Now I've put a macro effect over that RGB channel that's flipping between the colors. You set an intensity on one channel to select the macro effect and you fade another to cause the, the strip to wipe from one end to the other, or from the ends to the center, whatever. This is a sub-channel on the same effect where I've said don't move the whole strip but this many pixels. So this is basically a four-channel effect. Back to one pixel. Uh, one, and I'm fading one RGB channel from orange to purple. I've actually set all 150 channels to twinkle, so they're randomly coming on and off, and so you see a lot of color. This is a color effect, a twinkle. To use this, you, you only need three channels. You set the color effect as an intensity on one channel, you set the speed of it on another, and the overall brightness of it on a third channel. This one is speeding up and getting brighter. You'll see as it starts to go really fast, it'll just blend into white, or close to it. This is another color effect, except there's no off time. The individual pixels are changing to one of two million colors. You get to control the rate and the brightness. The rate is ramping up, so you can see it's blending into white again. Now what I've done is select the color effect where I have random colors on all the pixels, but I've put a macro effect on top of it, which is a chase. So this is basically a six channel effect. You set intensities on six channels and you get this. and you can control the speed, you can control how many pixels are on and off in the chase and which direction the chase is running in. This is a color wipe. This is a 50 RGB channel effect. It starts out yellow and it fades from right to left to magenta.
and that's it. This is to show you how it could be used as a wall washer. The camera is set for sand and snow and there is a neutral filter on it so it really can't photograph the, the strip, it's just too bright. But if we turn up toward the ceiling, which is about eight feet away and off-white, you get an idea as to what the different colors look like at a distance. The dispersion is 120 degrees, so you really can't put this at the bottom of a wall and expect it to light evenly up the wall. It will be very bright at the bottom and taper off rapidly. But you can see it does generate quite a bit of light, except in red. Finally, I wanted to show you the controller. We don't have the aluminum boxes yet, so I'll just show you the circuit board. On the right hand side you can see the two RJ45 connectors to daisy chain it into the LOR network. Below that is the 12 volt DC input power barrel. On the left hand side at the top are two status LEDs. Then there's a 1 8 inch stereo jack. That's how you get at the two trigger inputs for interactive shows or standalone. Then the blue reset button is below that and on the lower left is the ribbon connector. The controller has an accessory power supply so it can be used with wireless or one of the show directors. It also has standalone storage for 10,000 commands so it can direct itself or other controllers.